The IWC Ingenieur is back. One of the three most iconic Jetta designs from the 1970s is back. Interestingly, this is also one of the worst managed Jetta watches ever thanks to IWC. The Nautilus has been a mainstay, a staple, an icon since its inception, essentially. Likewise, the Royal Oak. It's the reason AP still exists, and in all honesty, probably the only reason AP still exists. IWC, however, have screwed around with the Ingenieur since its inception, going through multiple designs and design languages. It started essentially as something that looked like a tool dress watch in about 1955. In 1976, the Genta watch was released. Then, in 1982, IWC released an Ingenieur pocket watch. Yes, a pocket watch. In 2005, IWC tried its hand at making an AMG collaboration, a big, bulky, Panerai-esque interpretation of the Ingenieur. And in the mid-2010s, the Ingenieur for a while didn't look anything at all like the Genta model. Based on historical performance, this watch could be an absolute disaster in the hands of IWC. However, IWC have pulled themselves together recently, improving movements, improving finishing, and cleaning up their design language across all model lines. This is a 40 millimeter integrated bracelet sports watch. The case is 10.8 millimeters thick, making for a thin profile. The bracelet tapers down to 14 millimeters at the deployment clasp. It has a technical lug-to-lug -lug measurement of 49 millimeters, which on paper is absolutely reasonable. Water resistance is about 100 meters, which is fine. The movement is the same as the one in the IWC Mark 20, which is a new in-house manufacturer, actually it's not, but almost, but not really, but it has 120 hours of power reserve. The watch is anti-magnetic with a Faraday cage built on the inside, which was incidentally a key feature of the original Ingenieur, and it comes in one titanium version for I think about $14,000, and then three steel versions in a white, I'm gonna say bluish, greenish color, and a black dial, at $11,700. This watch is unmistakably gent in its design. If you had never heard of this watch and saw a Nautilus or an AP Royal Oak, you would definitely think somebody had been highly inspired by the first two watches. The bracelet center legs are highly similar to those of the Nautilus, not identical, where the Nautilus has rounded inlay center legs that are more or less flush with the outer links. The Ingenieur opts instead for squared inlays with, I'm gonna call it a speed bump profile, giving the bracelet quite a bit more dimension and tactility compared to the Nautilus. The case is somewhere between the angular, sharp, and very industrial look of the Royal Oak, with the sharp edges, clear angular shifts, and matte but superb finish on the one hand, and the more supple, rounded profile of the Nautilus. The Nautilus looks more gentle, more unassuming, more classy. There is a fair amount of detailing on the case and, and to be expected, a, fa a fairly good degree of finishing. The Ingenieur has crown guards which merge as elongated triangles around a simple rounded crown. The bezel is a classic porthole design. The bezel is radially brushed with the side flanks polished. The actual case is vertically brushed which makes for a seamless integration from case to bracelet. Under the crystal you have dials that are highly textured with alternating striped and spot patterns. The hands are baton or pencil hands. The hour indicators are simple stick indicators. The date window is at 9 o'clock. It has the IWC logo just below the 12 o'clock position and the Ingenieur logo just above the 6 o'clock position. So what's good and what's bad? Overall, the proportions of this watch are excellent. The design is minimalist and the choice of sticking to things like the brushing instead of more polish and shine is good. It keeps for the industrial Ingenieur aesthetic. The dial is clean, simple, and uncluttered, which works well for what is ostensibly an engineer's tool. The design is very true to the original, but overall better executed, including the simple details of fixing the problem with the inflexible bracelet, making it instead droop down, and second, having the bezel align more symmetrically where the previous screw down version or the original screw down version would make for a unaligned look, which not a lot of people appreciated. In all, there are a lot of really good design decisions in this watch. There's no place in the design where I can point and say, IWC, you screwed this up. Having said that, my gut reaction is, I don't really care that much for this watch. To be clear, I love IWC. I think the Mark 20 is one of the best steel sports watches out there. I've owned a Portofino, I've owned one of their chronographs, all cool watches. This watch though generates little to no emotion from me, which is a little bit frustrating. I mean, it's a Genta watch and I just don't really care. Why? Well, first of all, I honestly believe this watch is the worst of the Genta watches, relatively speaking. Yes, the man was a genius. Yes, he has more design credibility and capability than I will ever have. But so what? 
I know Frank Lloyd Wright is an iconic architect, but not everything he made was a home run. And this watch was just, in my opinion, not as good as the Nautilus or the AP. And, I, and this is not down to the fact that Patek or AP skills are necessarily better when it comes to finishing or movements. IWC has done a competent job of putting together this watch. It's a gentle watch, but it just isn't and never was the best one. The Ingenieur and Nautilus, like I said, were both released or commissioned in, in around about 1976. What came first in Genta's mind is unclear to me. Maybe he drew the one first or the other. You can see them as parallel, but you can also see them as, as a combination of what the Royal Oak was and what the Nau Nautilus had. It feels like a compromise. It feels in between or a first draft. The porthole look with the inserts is interesting enough, but it doesn't blow me away. It's by far the most industrial looking of the three watches but also in this new iteration it's very u-boat in its look and when i say u-boat i'm not talking about the watches i'm talking about submarines because the other would just be rude and unfair but this isn't the baseline for is this a good steel integrated sports bracelet watch this is this is a gentle watch the bar that this watch has to get over is so much higher it has to blow me away i'm mindful that my mind has been bombarded with how fantastic the ap and the patek are so i know that there must be some sort of unconscious bias but i'm just not there as to the competition, well, if you want a gentle watch, the two choices, if you can get a hold of them, are the Nautilus or the Royal Oak. In the high end, you can get a Chapard, which looks a lot like this watch. At least on the case, not so much on the bracelet. Returning to the Nautilus and the Royal Oak, they're just in a different league. They're in a higher caliber. IWC is many things, but they're not part of the Holy Trinity. At more affordable prices, you can get a Zenith Defy Classic in multiple variations, the skeleton version being my favorite. That is absolutely amazing. And Aura's Pro Pilot has a model that also has that industrial vibe of the Ingenieur, which is definitely worth considering and is way more affordable. If you want something, you know, more thematically relevant, well, then there's the Rolex Milgauss, which I know is just continued now, but you could probably still get one out there, or an Omega Railmaster. Short version, there are a ton of options out there in a lot of different price ranges, and there are also two other really cool Genta watches out there, if you can get a hold of them. Which brings me to my final point. $11,700. $11,700. IWC, are you out of your freaking minds? I'm sorry, but that's just ridiculous. This is the IWC Pilot Mark 20. Steel case, steel bracelet, identical movement, identical technical specs, except for the Faraday cage. And it comes in at around $6,000. Looking at the Mark 20 versus the Ingenieur, you math buffs have already figured out that that's almost double the price, double. But it's a Genta, you say. It's an iconic watch, you say. It should command a higher price than the IWC Pilot Mark 20 because you're wrong about its heritage and what that means for the price. But let's just stick with the numbers. So I did a little bit of a math. It was a little bit hard, but I scoured the internet. And in 2013, the engineer at the time cost $6,600. So I calculated the CAGR, C-A-G-R, compound annual growth for the engineer from 2013 to 2023. The number, 6% increase year over year since 2013. Obviously now you may be thinking 5%, 6%, that doesn't sound so bad. That seems fair enough and an increase from 2013 to 2023. But here's a question for you. What's the CAGR for the world's most popular chronograph, the Daytona, since its release in 2016. 2.56%. The Daytona has increased 2.56% since its increase. The Ingenieur is more than double the Daytona, the most popular watch in the world, double. What about the Nautilus? Well, I calculated the Nautilus's price increase since its inception in 1976. It's a vastly superior and better managed watch. Their number comes to 4.86%. That's somewhere between one and a quarter and 0.25% less than the Ingenieur. Compared to the 5711, the 5711 increased from 2006 by only 2.9% year over year. That's half the increase of the Ingenieur. So it costs double what a comparable IWC with the exact same movement costs. Yes, there can be some material and finishing differences, but at the end of the day, it's double the price of a similar watch in the same product line from the same manufacturer with a similar movement. No, identical movement. It's appreciated in value double that of a Rolex Daytona. Yes, it's a Genta watch, 
but it's the least desirable Genta watch that is inferior as a standalone product compared to the two other Gentas, and it has been mismanaged since its inception. As far as I'm concerned, this is a huge insult to my and any watch buyer's intelligence. I accept that I can be completely wrong about the look of this watch. I can be completely wrong about the, well, I can't be wrong about the way I feel, but the majority of you could have a completely different feel when you look at it, and that's totally cool. But let's just assume that this is the most beautiful watch IWC has ever made. It still in no way justifies that the price and more importantly the price hike for a steel watch at double the price of a comparable other IWC with a not even in-house movement. I don't care that it's a gender. IWC, shame on you. I'll pay $8,000, no more. And with that very upsetting ending, what do you think? Am I being unfair? What do you think about the price? Let me know, like, subscribe, cheers. I need a beer.